Hi, this is Lou Sanderson, and I'm here with Andrea McAllister, and she is working with uh, Laura's House. And so here's Al, um, Andrea that I'd like to introduce you to. She is, what is your title, Andrea? It's Director of Development and Communications. Wonderful, wonderful. So tell me a little history about Laura's House. How did it sure. become? Who is Laura? What's your sure. story? So uh, first off, um, thank you for having me. And um, My pleasure. <laughs> Uh, you're doing this during Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and I see you're wearing your purple, too. I am. So that's <laughs> awesome. Um, you know, uh, Laura's House began as a community organization and was really the impetus behind the organization was a mother who had a daughter named Laura. And unfortunately, she died at age 38 um, from a domestic violence situation. So her mother traveled you know down the coast to find some like-minded individuals um, this was in 1993-94 and was looking for individuals that would help her find uh, a place that would assist in developing programming and resources for victims of domestic violence because at the time there were very little and so in 1994, uh, she eventually got down to San Clemente and there was a women's group and they were really sympathetic and empathetic to her cause and wanted to help her honor her daughter, Laura. And so that's how Laura's house was founded. Um, so it was 1994, which was actually the same year as the OJ Simpson, Nicole oh. Brown Simpson, um, you know, and that was the first, one of the first times that really domestic violence was really kind of displayed across the national landscape. And of course it has existed for many, many years, unfortunately, but here we have two kind of high profile individuals and, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, it's splashed across the national news. So, um, you know, a super kind of pivotal year for mm -hmm. domestic violence and creating awareness about it. And then also kind of building up, you know, community resources and working on um, allowing individuals in the community to understand and be able to access services um, to help them. Yeah, wonderful. Now this year, 2020, we're having COVID. How yes. is this affecting um, the number of people that are reaching out to you? Yeah, I, you know, I think, I mean, it's been challenging for everybody, um, but especially victims of abuse, um, especially, you know, when in March we were at the st in the stay at home order and people were ordered to stay in their homes. Um, you know, that provided, you know, exceptional challenges for victims of abuse because here uh, you have, uh, you know, a constant you're constantly under the abusers, you know, view and, and always with them. And a lot of times for adults and for children who are abused, maybe their only time away from their abuser was when they were at work or when they were at school. Mm -hmm. And that also made it a little bit easier for them to access services. So perhaps, you know, if they needed to call or they wanted to find more resources or call our hotline, perhaps they could do it from a safe phone from work. Mm -hmm. And then when, you know, the stay at home order was in place, all of a sudden they're home all the time, 24 um, seven. So that posed additional challenges. Um, we did see uh, right after the stay at home order, you know, our numbers are about the same. And then quickly over the past few months, they've climbed actually to like exponentially uh, up 65%, which wow. is very significant. And last week alone, we had 122 calls to our hotline. So that's just very telling that, you know, the effects of the pandemic and the family stresses and, um, you know, people staying at home and with their abusers has definitely taken a toll on our community and our families. Wow. Wow. 
So anybody that wants to help, how can, how can we reach out to Laura's house and what kind of donation, what are, what are you looking for as far as help within um, what Laura's house needs? Yeah. So, so we have many ways um, to get involved. We always encourage um, people to visit our website because we have listed, you know, a number of ways, uh, which include uh, one, you can help do a gift card or wish list drive. Uh, we have our most needed items up on our website. And those are great, uh, you know, very tangible things that we need and, um, and you can fulfill. Um, and we also have suggestions for gift cards, you know, Target, grocery stores, gas cards, et cetera. Um, we also have um, an awesome Amazon wish list, which makes it super easy. <laughs> um, you can click and shop and you can use Amazon Smile and designate Laura's house. And Laura's house even gets a percentage of your Amazon purchases. Um, and those items get delivered directly to us, which is fabulous. So um, those are very helpful. Um, and then we also have currently, you know, uh, because of the pandemic, a lot of our volunteer opportunities are a bit limited, but we do have um, opportunity to do some hands-on work in our donation center. Uh, we have two resale stores um, that benefit, the proceeds benefit Laura's house. One's in San Juan and one's in Lake Forest. And so um, our new offices off of Journey, 33 Journey, um, we have a donation center warehouse. That's where in Elisa we, Viejo. Uh, mm -hmm, in Elisa Viejo. Yeah. And we accept items there. And you can check our website for the hours. And um, we, you know, have been getting a surge of donated items, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And so we do need help in sorting and pricing and um, all the health and safety protocols are in place. Um, and obviously um, we wanna protect both our staff and our volunteers. So um, we have it all set up. So it's safe and easy to volunteer with us. That's wonderful. Now, Laura's house is a local nonprofit that really needs help, especially because of the crazy year that we've had. Um, so go to laurashouse.org. The other thing too, is if you um, want to also donate to Laura's house and we are actually um, helping you buy or sell a home, we are actually going to donate in your name to Laura's house um, through, you know, through closing of escrow. So we're, all about helping any way we can. Um, you know, it can be just a small donation, or you know, something bigger. You can eat, eat, you can actually even um, designate Laura's house in your trust as one of the uh, nonprofits that you want um, your your um, estate to go to. So you know, there's lots of ways to help, and I look forward to you know helping any way I can. And I appreciate your time, Andrea. Oh, and, thank you. You know, Laura's House is a really great local community. Um, and especially if you're looking for something to do, maybe you're furloughed or, you know, your hours are cut or you're retired, you know, they really could use the help. And mm -hmm. I really appreciate you checking in. And thank you again. Thanks for having me. Oh, oh my gosh, now I need my glasses. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I can cut this part off.